Good conversation. Mm -hmm. uh. Right. Right. Yes. Yes, I, I, I should. Uh, well, I mean, actually, what, what I think you're going to be talking about and what you have to say about it sounds probably a good deal more important than what I have to <laughs> say. And, and actually, I, th I think that, 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 dare I say, the guts of the evening is going to be in what, what you have to, <laughs> to, to, to say there. Um, and uh, also, I've, I've got a kind of vaguely chronic sore back, so I'll be sitting down for most of what I have to say. I mean, it might possibly be that when I get enthusiastic about some point, I might stand up and, and, and have something to say. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of vary in, in sitting down. But, but basically, I'll be, I'll be um, sit, sitting down. Um, I, I should begin with another um, apology, actually, which is that um, I have given a version of this talk. Um, I feel often it's probably up the back here. I think it's up the back. This is weird. Is this one any good? No, that's the one. This is a suspicious looking black mouse. <laughs> See, say, sort it. We might have had take it away and destroy it in Prince Street Gardens. <laughs> Throw snowballs at it. Yes, I, 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 I've given a, a version of this talk uh, at the, 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 the Quaker meeting house to a mainly um, Quaker audience um, in the last few weeks. So um, this is a kind of set, I'm visiting the subject matter again to, to, tonight. Um, it might be that, I mean, that there, there's the... Um, this is, is, is the, the um, talk which exists in, on, on the Ragged University website. Um, if you want to, to trace it, my line of thought, back, you might want to um, go back to the, the, the version of the, the talk, which is on the, the, the Quaker Edinburgh uh, website. Um, and um, there's a, a, a link um, which is included and on the second side of the of the of the um, of the of the ragged university talk. So if anybody wants to look back to what I had to say then, um, you can you can do that. I'm not suggesting that you should do that, but uh, if anybody's curious to see where I'm coming from in points, that, that, that you might want to check check back back there. Um, I've got a feeling that there are. Unfortunately, um, some uh, typos have, have crept in to the, 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 the ragged university version. But I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely prone to typos. I make mistakes about typos all over the place. So um, please don't be too offended by any bits of words that I've got wrong way round or something like that. That's just what happens if you look at a paper by Richard Gunn. It's all tangled up in, in, in detail at, from time to time. So anyway, that's that. Um, <clears throat> so what I am talking about tonight, well, when I was talking at the Quaker meeting house um, and talking mainly to Quakers, um, I had in mind that um, my Quakerism uh, started in the middle of the, the 17th century, 
Um, and um, the, my, my talk was, to some extent, uh, to do with, with the early days of, of Quakerism in the, the 17th century. Um, I'm not assuming that I'm talking to uh, a Quaker audience here. Um, some of you might be Quakers and might, might not, um, but I, I'm, I'm not making that assumption. So I, 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 what I've, I've, I've said here is, is that my subject matter, it sounds a bit dry, put this way, I'm afraid. Um, it will sound a bit more intelligible if I get my glasses off as well, actually. Yes, my aim is to uh, share with you the riches of a historical period, which sounds about as dry as you can possibly imagine, actually. But that is what I'm trying to do tonight. Um, I'm trying to, to open up for you um, some lines of thought which, uh, were, uh, which were extant in the, the, the middle of the, the, the 17th century, um, and which um, knock on ahead into, indeed, the present time, um, especially in radical thinking of various kinds. When I say radical thinking, um, I, one of my points of, of reference is the, the, the Occupy movement, which you might remember um, gained a lot of, of, of publicity in the, the years, well, roughly 2011 to 2013, um, Occupy Wall Street and all that kind of, kind, kind of, kind of stuff. Um, and I would want to suggest that, um, in particular, the Occupy movement, um, in 2011 to 13, uh, harks back to lines of radical thought that are to be found in the middle of the, the 17th century. Um, but there, there's a particular book uh, about the Occupy movement, which I think I'd like to draw your attention to, um, and which, uh, point, which suggests, amongst other things, that the, 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 the Quaker movement was one of the sources of the ideas of, of Occupy. In the early part of the of 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 of, of this century, um, the the book isn't mainly about um, about uh, the seventeenth century, but but it's one point where uh, the, the 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 author suddenly loops back to what was there before, and um, in particular the Quaker movement is mentioned in that connection. It's by David Graeber and uh, called. The, 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 the Democracy Project, um, published in 2013 by um, Alan Lane in, uh, in, in, in um, London. And I think it's, as far as I know, it's the, it's the best um, book-length um, exploration uh, of uh, Occupy ideas. I'm not saying there's the single book of Occupy, but it, it, it's a particularly good and thought-provoking uh, volume. And he looks back to, to Quakerism in the 17th century. And I'm following his gaze, so to speak, and looking at the, the 17th century um, here t tonight. Um, mostly when uh, historians of ideas uh, are trying to trace um, uh, radical political ideas. Um, they tend to confine their attention either to a, 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 a debate which took place in Orthodox Marxism in the early days, early years uh, of the, 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 the 20, 20th century. It gets referred to as the, the problem of organization and uh, Rosa Luxemburg and Vladimir Lenin are the, the, the two main protagonists in this debate. Um, and what I would 
want to suggest is that, 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 that the, the problem of um, organization as debated by Luxembourg and Lenin is a very narrow view, takes a very narrow view of, of, of political organization. And um, in fact, one should broaden the, the, the canvas, so to speak, and look at uh, 17th century ideas, which in some ways are actually much closer to the Occupy movement um, than anything in the, 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 the problem of organization early 20th century um, terms. But I could say more about that, but I don't really want to. Um, I, I, I'd like to move on to, um, to, to, to the 17th century material. Um, I, I'd, I'd like to quote, actually, one very short piece by a 17th century um, writer um, <clears throat> called John Saltmarsh um, in his book, uh, Smoke in the Temple, um, in 1646, um, says, uh, let there be free debates and open conferences for all and of all sorts that will um, concerning differences in spirituals. Debates shouldn't be confined to any one particular sectarian kind of, kind of um, commitment. Um, he says, where doors are not shut, there will be no breaking them open. Yeah, so it's not, not any one line thinks it's, it's got a, a, a monopoly on, on truth and it's going to break open a debate and tell you what to, to think about, about things. Um, it, it's, it's meant to be an open conference. Um, and I think that, 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 the, the, the emphasis on political discussion in the, uh, the, 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 um, the Occupy movement um, follows on very much in, in the, 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 the footsteps of, 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 of Salt Marsh's um, um, remark here. I don't know, I haven't the slightest notion of whether people in the Occupy movement uh, had, any, had any influence, direct influence by John <coughs> Salt Marsh on, um, on Occupy. Um, but I think that there was a, there was a, a connection of, 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 of ideas there. There's other features in which the, the 17th century movement um, anticipated the Occupy movement. We might come on to some of those um, a bit later. Uh, but um, I'd like to uh, turn to the, the, the 17th century at the moment and uh, try to open up the, 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 the period of vitivating of the 17th century and that concerns me uh, tonight. Um, one uh, writer, one historian, which is important here, um, I'd like to, to, to draw to your attention. Um, it's, it's mentioned in the, the, the references at the end of the, the article. Um, a, a, a Marxist historian, Named Christopher Hill, um, paid close attention to what radicals in the, the 17th century had to say, and his book, particularly called *The World Turned Upside Down*, um, which uh, is, is one that I w warmly recommend. Um, I mean, if, if anybody, and I'm sure there's many of you who have, who have not read The World Turned Upside Down, um, I, I um, strongly urge you to go and get hold of a copy of it. It's, it's published, amongst other places, by um, Penguin Books. Um, and uh, he's very reliable. There are a few things I don't agree with, but by and large, if if, if Hill says something there, then it probably is, is, is liable to be true, and you can depend upon that as a basis for for um, further research. 
So the world turned upside down is, is, is definitely um, a book worth uh, looking at. Um, so what happened in the um, 17th century that concerns us? Um, I mean, if you look back to the 17th century, at the time when, as I mentioned, I think that the, the, the Quakers um, were originated, um, <clears throat> but not only Quakers, other lines of thought as well. Um, if, if you look back to the, the middle of the 17th century, what you see is um, in, in, in the UK, in Britain, um, is something that gets called um, in school book terms the, the English Civil War or, uh, or <clears throat> um, and, 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 and I don't think the term English Civil War is really in the end all that helpful uh, partly because what triggered quite a lot of the, 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 um, the fuss in the middle of the 17th century was in fact Scottish Presbyterianism. And that means that if you want to understand what was going on in the English, so-called English Civil War, um, you really have to look at events which are north of the, of the, the, the Scottish English um, divide. Um, again, I'm not going to get into that in, in any detail, but I think the phrase the, the English Civil War is, is, a, a, is misleading just through its reference to English. I mean, it, it, you could call it perhaps, I suppose, the British Civil War, but that sounds as though it's got a, a kind of Union Jack kind of stamped on, on top of it, and that wasn't the, 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 the case. Um, the other term of, for the events that took place in the middle of the 17th century uh, was another misnomer in a way, the English Revolution. And I'm sorry about English here again. It's misleading in the way that I've just um, explained. Um, but a revolution, it's what you, what you find. And I, I personally would agree that, that, yes, it's to be thought of as a, a revolution. But um, at that point, uh, further problems um, arise. All right, it's, it's, it's a 17th, 17th century revolution. What kind of revolution are we looking at? What sort of revolution? Who revolted and what kind of event are we talking about? There's two ways in which historians, historians who agree that it's a revolution, there are two ways in which the notion of revolution has been um, dwelt upon. Sometimes the, 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 the events of the 17th century are thought of as a, um, a, 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 a successful um, bourgeois revolution. The rise of the bourgeoisie asserted, uh, the bourgeoisie asserted itself and, and uh, a successful revolution on this view uh, because um, what might be referred to as British capitalism launched its it's, it itself at, at that time, so some historians want to claim. And I, I mean, all right, it's a bourgeois revolution, but I, I, the, the other way in which I think you can describe the same event is to say that it's actually a popular revolution, but in fact, a failed popular revolution. And why a failed popular revolution? Well, it failed. I mean, it, it, basically, in, in by, by 1660, the, the, the monarch, the monarch uh, monarchy was restored um, in in Britain, and, and Charles II um, came to the, the, the throne. And, and by the end of the uh, 17th century and during the 18th century, um, Britain. North, uh, 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 Scotland and, and England were uh, ruled by a far from enlightened 
are far from progressive uh, social um, elite. And the 18th century was a phase mainly of, of stability. Um, of course, towards the end of the, the, the French, of the, the 18th century revolution, you get another revolution in France. You get the French Revolution in 1789. Um, but for most of, of, of the, the 18th century, um, the, the, the UK or Britain or whatever you want to call it, uh, was a, a relatively stable um, country and the, this elite held to, 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 to power. Um, the, 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 um, through a really quite savage um, criminal law um, that, that yeah, for instance, that, that offences against property um, would be uh, could, 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 could be capital um, offences. Again, I'm not going to go into that. I mean, it's a topic all to to itself. Um, I, I, I personally much, much dislike really anything, everything to do with the, the 18th century. Um, but uh, you can see it as a period of reaction after the revolutionary <laughs> and popular events uh, of the, 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 the mid 17th century. Now, what concerns me in, in tonight um, is the the, the, uh, the the popular wing of the the, the, the revolution of the, the mid seventeenth century and the, the the voice of the the, the, the the popular revolution has been paid considerable attention to by as I've mentioned uh, Christopher Hill in the world turned upside down. And I think what I will do is go directly to uh, an example of um, revolutionary thought from the, 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 the mid 17th century. Um, I mentioned that, that uh, the, the Quakers, uh, whose main charismatic leader or, or, or founding father was, was George Fox, uh, who published a, a, a journal of, of his doings, which is fascinating and perfectly good read. You can pick it up and, again in Penguin. And there's, there's references again in, in the, uh, uh, the book, but in the references at the end of the, 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 the paper. Um, but beside the Quakers and, and uh, George Fox, there were other um, revolutionary groups and individuals. Um, and uh, I'll come on to one in particular, who is a, an individual who I found very sympathetic in many ways. So I enjoy talking ab ab about him. Um, he may or may not be uh, new to to you, but uh, at any rate, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about him today. Um, there were uh, in in the, the, the 1640s, the um, the church censorship and state censorship uh, broke down. The, 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 the chaos of the of the events. Um, just couldn't keep pace with the, what the, what the material that was at that point published and and, and circulated. Um, and what took place when when censorship broke down was that there was a, a kind of popular upsurge of ideas which um, are, are, had not really been heard of very much in the the, the UK. Um, that there were a whole number of different groups um, uh, seekers um, um, well actually I'll go on to, to, to the one in particular if I want to talk about um, ranchers um, and uh, diggers now the diggers are the one that you might have heard of um, in a, at a school 
um, through the level, level. It, um, the, the, the diggers were communists and they, they set out to, um, to farm land on St. George's Hill, which is quite near to London, though I'm afraid my English geography is pathetic, so I can't tell you exactly where St. George's Hill is. It's probably got a, a, a tube station somewhere attached to it, but, but, uh, 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 <clears throat> if it's to do with London. Um, eventually, the, 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 the diggers um, attempt to run a communist agriculture was destroyed and thrown to, to one side. Um, but it was meant to be a, 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 an anticipation of what a, a communist society might have, have, have been like. Um, so the, 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 the diggers' approach um, was. Um, the ranters were not, well, they actually were um, communists, amongst other things. And they weren't, didn't take part in the, the, the um, in George's Hill venture, uh, but they, they, they favoured uh, um, the idea of shared property. Um, they were um, more particularly and more especially uh, um, anarchists. So one of the, the lines of, of 20th or 21st century anarchist thinking goes back to the, 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 the ranchers um, in, the, the, um, in the 17th century. There, there is one um, publicist um, who was a, a, who was a kind of, <coughs> you can take it that his um, writings express the views of the, the ranchers uh, as a whole, not only <coughs> him um, individually. A man called Abitzer Kopp, C-O-P-P-E. And um, Abitzer Kopp's writings I want to recommend uh, to you. Um, there book which I have found <coughs> um, useful in reading um, Abitzer Kopp's writing. Uh, there's a, a man, there's a book edited by a man called uh, Nigel Smith and published in the, the, the 1980s um, called A Collection of Ranter Writings um, from the 17th Century. <coughs> Um, it would be fair to say that the, the ranchers were um, mainly an informal um, grouping. There wasn't any centralized um, rancher uh, bureaucracy, if you, you like. I mean, you, you, I, I, I've got a feeling that, that ranchers were kind of, I mean, it, 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 to use the, 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 the metaphor of, of you know, who could be a worked out to set up a, 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 a piss up in a brewery, probably not, actually. It had been all, all over the place. And, yeah. and, 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 and so uh, 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 intrinsically and intentionally um, in, uh, informal grouping is what we, what we were. Um, there's a, a, a writer of, of the late uh, 20th century um, called Davis, J.C. Davis, who wrote a book called Fear, Myth, and History, which argues that the, the ranters didn't, didn't, didn't actually exist. Um, and I think what's going on is that, uh, that, that, that they, they don't and didn't exist as a, a, a bureaucratic entity. They're just, you know, there is no list of, of people who signed on to be you know, ranters, that kind of thing. It wasn't that sort of thing. In a way, it's more like like, like the, the Reagan University. <laughs> it's kind of, kind of, kind of, so people who happen to be sitting in this room now and are 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 are, are interacting that that is the Reagan University. Yeah. Um, 
So I don't think one needs to bother too much about J.C. Davids um, and his charge of non-existence. Um, uh, to, uh, to turn to a, a 17th century source, um, George Fox, who certainly, and the Quakers, who certainly did exist, um, George Fox, in his journal, um, tells um, uh, the stories about meeting up with ranters from time to time. And so that, that, that there, in any usual meaning of the term, there is no doubt that ranters did exist and, and uh, George Fox met ranters. <coughs> he didn't get on well with ranters. And, uh, and there's a, a, interestingly, he didn't actually quarrel with the ranters theologically, uh, as I say, on grounds of principle. Um, but he, he didn't um, get on well with with, with ranters, partly because ranters, um, as anarchists, um, had, had a, a, an intense, uh, had a intentionally progr progr progressive, I'm sorry, um, provocative um, kind of style um, of, 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 of interacting. Um, they're a bit like um, the, um, what in the 20th century became known as performance art or, or guerrilla theatre, um, kind of informal events which are meant to be provocative to the people who are around about them. I mean, the Dada movement or the surreal, surrealist movement. Um, and the, the, the notion is to, to challenge, through such events are meant to challenge individuals to um, to react as though they, the, 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 the audience, were in sympathy with the, 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 the radical action, or provocative action, which is, is being presented. Um, it meant to, 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 the, the, the aim of such action is to enrage um, the, the, the bourgeoisie, basically, to, to enrage, enrage people who are, if you like, straight, yeah? But those who are in the know can sit back and say, oh, <laughs> that's, that's okay, that's quite, quite, quite witty, quite elegant, quite. <clears throat> um, and the, the, the um, ranters were very much into that kind of, of, of provocative, um, uh, action. Um, and they, um, what, they did various, they, they, they I don't know if they practiced free love. They possibly did, but in any case, they advocated ideas of, of free love. Um, they um, drank alcohol. Um, definitely the kind, of, the, 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 the kind of guys to have another pint, stay in the pub, kind, 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 of, kind, of, kind of thing. Um, so, um, bring your own booze, kind of, kind of. That kind of thing. Um, and uh, they also um, were involved in swearing. Uh, that Abitza Kot speaks for them, saying that um, there is swearing, which, it, which he favors, is, as he puts it, swearing in the light gloriously, yeah? as opposed to swearing in the dark, which is uh, just uh, uh, being a bit of a drag, actually. Um, now, um, George Fox, the, 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 the Quaker, um, was a more abstemious kind of, kind of man. He didn't, he, he, when somebody, when somebody pressed a drink upon him, he would drink, sip his drink to make the, because he wanted to make the point that he's not being outclassed theologically. He wants to demonstrate that alcoholic drink is, is part of God's creation. Therefore, he doesn't hate creation and so have, 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 have a drink. But he won't go out for it himself. He's, he, 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 he's um, a, a more, uh, he's, he's certainly a thoughtful uh, man and, and, and a politically radical man in a number of ways. Um, it's interesting that we're sitting, having this conversation in a, a church hall because Quakers uh, and, and Fox in particular uh, would 
refer to churches as steeple houses. Yeah, there's nothing kind of what sort of sacred yeah, about, a, about a, a church. He probably wouldn't go into a church. He tried to avoid churches. He would have an argument with people or have a discussion with them outside of churches or where, where people tended to, 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 to meet in, in, in a, a church kind of thing. But um, steeple houses was his kind of, one would almost say secular term for a, for a, a church. It's not the notion of a sacred, of sacred ground is not one that he wants to, to, um, to endorse. Um, now, Fox um, met at various points with ranchers or groups of ranchers um, and who would force, force drink upon him and so forth. And, and he didn't want to have really anything much to do with that. Very often he would be in jail. He'd have been, he'd been the, 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 the local um, constabulary or, or local establishment had um, taken exception to Fox. If he if he'd been, uh, he might get thrown over a hedge, or he might get put in jail, or, or whatever. So he was a, a radical um, in a political sense. Um, the ranchers were were indeed radical in their anarchist sense and, and their provocative sense. They want to to, to and, and and I think it would be true to say um, Christopher Hill. Says it's a case, I don't know, that, <coughs> that, that Quakers in their earliest days were much influenced by ranters, by provocative actions like nudism, for instance, going naked for, uh, for a sign, yeah, was one of the things that, that, that Quakers were, were um, into uh, in, in, in the, the Civil War period. Later on, Ran, uh, Quakers got a bit more iffy about doing such things. But the, the notion of, of, of provocative actions lived on in the Quaker tradition. Um, th th there's a, a fascinating um, 18th century uh, Quaker called Benjamin Lay, uh, who um, who carried out actions of, of, of a guerrilla theater in, in in Philadelphia, where he he, he lived, um, to to um, try to 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 um, get get try, try to provoke um, Quakers who, um, despite their Quakerism, uh, were uh, were owners of slaves, yeah, and he wanted to to make the point that that. No, you can't be a, 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 a Quaker, yeah? And, and the slave of an incompatible kind of thing. So, so Benjamin Lay, uh, um, was, was a master of, 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 of guerrilla theater, um, to, which is meant to, 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 um, enrage the, 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 the respectable, um, Quakers of, of Philadelphia, um, in the, the later part of his life. Um, and <clears throat> the, 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 the Quaker um, tradition of, um, of opposition to the, the, the present uh, the, the present elite situation, yeah, has lasted on through indeed into to, to present the present day. Um, the, the radicals, uh, uh, sorry, well, ranters were more. Um, overt in their, their, their opposition. Um, and Abitzer Kopp was the main uh, uh, writer of, 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 of ranter texts. Um, in this book, which I have Way better than some. It doesn't matter. Um, it's in it, your hand. Hmm? It's in your hand. Oh, you it's in your hand. Up. Thank oh. you. What? Oh, yeah, mine. Oh. Yes, all right. Thank, thank you very much. But in this book, there are two works in particular by Abitza Kopp. 
Um, one is called a fiery flying roll, which um, makes one think that one has broken, that one has burnt one's brightness. But the word roll, sometimes it's just in the 17th century spelling gets a bit, um, it becomes a bit flexible. Sometimes the roll is R-O-L-L, -L, yeah? But also roll is sometimes spelt by, um, by, by cop as R-O-U-L-E. And the, the roll that you've got to think of is, is um, like a, a, a parch, parchment, yeah? A fiery flying roll in the, the, the sense that it, 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 it is, a, is a, a politically radical um, declaration. Um, the, the, these two texts by Cop, the, the, the fiery flying rule and the second fiery flying rule, were both uh, published in 1649, which um, was the date of um, Charles I's um, execution. I don't mean that the, that the, 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 the uh, ranters were literally and actually involved in the execution of Charles, but it's that's the period of history that we're dealing we're dealing with. Sorry, were you signaling? No, no, I'm listening. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so. Um, Cops and fiery flying rolls, both of them, one and two, um, are, 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 are crucial documents of the, 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 the Ranta uh, movement. And what I thought I would do is go a little bit into um, Cops' uh, writings. Um, One could approach, of course, the period that I'm discussing uh, in different ways. One way of doing that is to try a kind of survey of um, a, a whole number of uh, sects or, or movements and go through them one at, at a time. Um, I think that would be a bit boring to do. It would be conscientious, but I, I don't think it would make for terrifically um, exciting um, listening. So I'll stay with, with, uh, um, with Abitza Kopp, not because he's the only radical of the mid 17th century, but he's one <coughs> whom I um, feel sympathy with. I'm not again trying to say that I feel sympathy with Kopp instead of or up and above and beyond, say, George Fox. Um, but Cop is, is, is likely to be a person who you are relatively unfamiliar with. So, so I thought I'd use my time to, to, to focus mainly on, 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 on Cop. Yeah, the, the, the ranchers I've explained um, the, were a, a famous or indeed notorious radical grouping which subsisted in the Civil War years. And one should not be put off with J.C. Davis's um, declaration that ranchers didn't exist. I mean, basically they did exist, but they were not, uh, they didn't exist as, as a, a bureaucratic um, entity. <coughs> they were an, an informal um, movement. with whom uh, Fox did not see eye to eye. Um, yes, a comparison between Cop 
and uh, more recent 20th and 21st century um, movements um, could be followed and explored in, in, in various ways. Uh, <clears throat> um, Kopp in uh, his, uh, I think it's actually the second of his fiery flying roles, um, reminds his readers that, quote, um, God has chosen base things. God has chosen base things, low things. He's partly meaning low people, as in, in people who are low in a social spectrum, as opposed to people who are um, rulers of countries or, or, or whatever. He also wants the word base uh, in, 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 to mean that it, 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 things that are very often despised or, or, or held <coughs> um, in contempt uh, are, are valued by by God. So, um, so Cobb says, and there's a d direct comparison that you can make with <coughs> the 20th century <coughs> um, on this business of, of base things. Um, in the 20th century, a French writer, um, Georges Bataille, who is an anarchist, um, and also he's, a, he's close to the surrealist movement, um, he wrote um, a fascinating memoir on a paper whose title perhaps speaks for itself. It's called The Old Mole, and the prefix sur on, um, in the words sur homme, or Superman, the Nietzsche's Superman, and surrealist. And <clears throat> what he wants to argue is that, that um, the idea of, of a top-down <laughs> kind of ordering um, is, is not what anarchism or indeed surrealism wants to, 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 to champion. And despite the fact that <clears throat> the word that the, the, the prefix sur um, occurs both in, 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 in Nietzsche's um, writings, which um, Bataille what admires, um, um, and also with the notion of surrealism, top, you know, it's like top down <coughs> surrealism. Um, it, it, it's sort of bottom, bottoms up surrealism is what, what Bataille wants to, 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 um, to defend. And, <coughs> and uh, the notion of, um, <coughs> I'm sorry. The idea of, of, of God has God has chosen base things um, is a, 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 an interesting thing for um, Cop to say in the 17th century because it's it's almost like a a, 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 a reference to the same um, ordering of of, of 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 events and of of, of um, substances and of people as it occurs in <laughs> the, the, the 20th century um, anarchist and surrealist movements. I think one could follow through the, 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 this notion of um, God uh, having chosen base things and follow through the comparison between um, 17th century <coughs> rancher thought and, and um, 20th century surrealist uh, thought. And <coughs> they're very similar and, and related um, lines of ideas. <coughs> But 
But I think another feature of COP is worth drawing, I should draw a, a, a attention to here. Um, COP um, and many of the, 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 the radicals of the mid 17th century um, thought that a major social and cultural and indeed spiritual change was on the way sooner rather than later. And Cobb underlines the closeness of this change um, in a number of ways. Um, he says, never was there such a time since the world stood as now is. And he says, it is but a very little time. Or even more succinctly, he says, um, it's the last days. Yeah, so we're just on the edge of a major change, which is social and spiritual and cultural um, in the days when he uh, himself is writing in the late 1640s. I think you get the same emphasis of, of the imminence of change in, in uh, George Fox's writings uh, as well. It's not a, a, an emphasis that is unique to, to, to Cobb, although he is perhaps unusual in, in emphasizing vividly the, the, the closeness of the change that he thinks is, 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 um, is already underway. The, um, <clears throat> the idea that, that, that change is imminent um, and the notion of uh, performance art or uh, guerrilla theater are very closely linked. Um, if you think that things are just on the edge of changing, then already we've got one Foot, so to speak, in the, the, the beyond that we're going to be moving forward to. Um, and to act in such a way that this step forward has already been taken, yeah, uh, makes more sense. Um, it, it, it dramatizes for other people uh, what is already underway. Uh, um, and um, it would be true to say, I think, that, that, that most um, 17th century um, radicals um, had a sense of oncoming change um, in, in, in their, their writings and in what they said um, and did. Um, the, 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 the communist digger um, colony in St. George's Hill, for example, uh, is wanting to say that, that, that already we are moving into um, a a period where a private property um, is, is non-existent and therefore it makes sense to act in a communal and communist way um, because already we are moving towards that kind of kind of uh, um, social uh, mode. At this point, I could <coughs> add in um, a, a term which became um, a relatively wide known, well known one in the, the, the 20th century or in debates in the 20th century. Um, because I think that, that um, this term harks back to these 17th century writers that I've been um, referring to uh, already. The term is prefiguration, um, which is a long and slightly, slightly sort of rambling term, 
But the, the idea of, 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 and if you think of radical thought, um, radical thought is prefigurated or it takes a prefigurated stance. Um, if it <coughs> wants to say that it um, is not merely in favor of this or that social change, but that in this particular movement, whatever it might be, that, that um, already this movement is a, a kind of anticipation of the change concern. And the slogan that is sometimes used in this connection in the 20th century is simply, be the change. Yeah, don't, don't, just, don't, don't just talk about it and say we should try to move forward in that direction, but actually be the, 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 whatever it is that you want to be to be general. Um, quite often, um, anti-military and uh, anti-militaristic um, movements want to to be the change um, in a peaceful sense, rather than than merely saying um, there should not be war. Yeah, but actually, we will not. Um, um, we will not act in a belligerent way. We'll attempt to to be the change towards peacefulness that we that we think that we that we want to bring into to existence. Um, and I think it, one could say that, that the notion of um, prefiguration <coughs> um, was launched. I don't mean it originated entirely there, but that there was certainly many many of the, the the radical movements of the mid 17th century were prefigurated in kind. I think that's the case with uh, the, the ranchers, for instance, um, that, that um, <coughs> in carrying out uh, provocative actions, they want to say that, well, the anarchism that we favor is already there. Yeah, we are anarchists, not just that we favor, but we actually are anarchists. Um, and uh, we will act uh, in an, an anarchistic way, or a peaceful way, or whatever it might, whatever it might be. Um, in the, 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 the debate in, in Orthodox Marxism at the beginning of the, the 20th century between Luxembourg and, <coughs> and Lenin, the, the, the debate on the problem of, of, of organization, um, <coughs> the notion of prefiguration it, it plays no play whatsoever. In that debate, um, organizations of forms of organization are assessed simply and solely uh, in an instrumental fashion about what kind of organization can be, can lead us to um, a particular goal uh, more effectively. The idea of, uh, that that prefiguration might be an important consideration is, is, is not present in, in in Luxembourg, nor indeed in, in Lenin, as either. Um, and of course, the the, the, the Occupy move, movement in 2011 to to 13 uh, was very much prefigurated. In precisely the way that, that Lenin would want to rubbish or or push to to one to one side. Um, that's a, a, another sense in which there, there's a, a, a direct link between 17th century um, political organization and radicalism <clears throat> and the the the, the, uh, the, 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 um, the Occupy movement in the early years of, of this, this century. So the, the, the problem of organization can be put to one side, really. It's not a helpful way of thinking about um, prefiguration, of thinking about uh, precursors of, of the, the, the Occupy movement. The Occupy movement seems to loop back to the 17th century I'm thinking much more uh, directly.
point, <coughs> this point in my um, uh, script, I, I, I repeat some of the themes that I've already talked about a little. Um, and I think I would like quite soon to, to go into a, a sort of conversation mode in this, this meeting. I mean, you've been here, I mean, I'm not sitting on a, a, a dais, but, but if I was sitting on a dais, I, I could, you see, stand up again and tell you what is the case about this, that, and, and the other. Um, but I mean, it's, it, the, the much more a worthwhile course of action, I think, is, uh, is for us to, to be the change and to, so, so conversation can, 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 <clears throat> can begin. Um, and I certainly want to claim that the, 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 the 17th century writers uh, pick up on themes and ways of approaching radicalism uh, that get lost in uh, either in the, the, the sort of um, grey-suited years of, of, of social democracy in the 19th century or the, the, the Leninist um, ideas of, of, of efficacious revolutionary parties, which is what, what Lenin wants to, 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 to emphasize. Yeah, the very last thing to say about the beats of thought is that, <coughs> as with most, uh, as with many 17th century writers, he is a, a terrifically good and clear and, and forceful writer. Um, what you've got to get used to is the idea that, that theology, which is these days not a very widespread concern, but theology, is, which is con discussed in, in the, in the um, the theology fa faculty of the of Edinburgh University, for instance, <coughs> um, is a, a very esoteric type kind of thing. Whereas in the 17th century, political debates would be debates in theology, and, and theological issues would be precisely the, the live issues of the of the day. And um, when, when you you read someone like uh, I mean, say Cox, um, or for that matter, um, George Cox. You could find yourself asking these days, <coughs> so what's all this stuff about God? You know, what, what's, why all this theological stuff? Why, why not talk directly about this world? Well, that, that, that simply is the idiom which was um, current in the 17th century um, world. <coughs> I want to encourage you to think of the, the, the 17th century world as one where ideas were very forceful and <coughs> sharp-edged, um, despite or perhaps because of the, the theological idiom which is, which is employed. Don't be put off by references to, to God or whatever. Um, <coughs> Any more than you should be put off by my cough, which is certainly irritating. Right. Well, I shall stop at this point. Would you like some water? Shall I get you some water? Uh, no, it's okay. Thank you. That, that'll last for about some moments and then I'll stop. <laughs> <coughs> oh, thank you very much. Sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt. You use this word occupy. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't quite get one. Okay. Um, and, well, I, I'm giving the, 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 the dates a little bit <coughs> sorry, schematically. Um, but in the, the 2011 
um, 12, 13, roughly that period. Um, it was a radical political movement which calls itself the o Occupy Movement. Yeah? Um, and the, 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 the Occupy Movement was criticized by um, journalists because it wouldn't, it wouldn't tell people what it was really about. I mean, it, 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 journalists would go and talk to people involved in, in an occupation, say, well, what are you in favor of? What, what changes do you want to make? What should government do? And, and <clears throat> occupy, the occupiers, if you like, um, said, uh, we, we, we don't have any specific ideas in mind. Um, what we want to do is, is to, to um, further um, a, a, a discussion on um, private property and, and, and private ownership and capitalism. And, um, but we're not asking for the government to do this, that, or, or the other. We want to, to open a space where there, can, where there will, will be discussion. Um, and very often it, it would be in the center of, of towns or cities or uh, public parks, for example, um, that, that uh, large numbers of, sometimes hundreds of people would, would occupy a public space and, and attempt to hold a discussion of, 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 of how, well, really, what, how, how should private property what role in, in private property should it should exist, really? Yeah, and, and so we will have a talk about 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 it was that. A huge shock, wasn't it? Hmm? it was a huge shock to the British culture. I mean, I think it was in thirty or forty cities around the world. Yes, but they all sat down in St Andrews Square, and there were people talked to, and they stayed overnight in tents. Yeah, it was an enormous shock. Yes, yes, yes. It was very impressive. Yes, it, yes, indeed, yes, yes. And uh, I think they did pretty well because they were saying, you're so right, you know, you've gotten got all these, all these experts and skills and history and support, and don't deny that there are problems, mm. and we just want to say, get on and solve them. Yes, yes. You know, they, they, they weren't just about the solutions. I, th I, think the, I think the Occupy movement... Um, in many important ways, change the, the political agenda. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, one thing which was not centralized, not, not focused upon much before the Occupy movement uh, was um, inequality. Mm -hmm. And for the idea that, 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 that some small group of people should possess most of the, of the, of the, <coughs> the property in society is found unacceptable by the Occupy. People in and, and, and the, the, uh, so, uh, sometimes uh, if a uh, uh, present day society was defended on the grounds that, that with um, neoliberal free market economics that, that everybody everybody would get better and better and better mm -hmm. and better and you see because everybody would get better and better that, 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 that it wouldn't really matter that one guy got Vastly better, better because the other one was, was and yeah. it doesn't work. And it was really tiny, though, um, significant screens in Andrew Square. And Richard Branson was opening a bank on the corner, and Harvey Nix was over here. And these people were saying, We're just sitting to talk about life's problems and the world's problems. And, so, yeah. and uh, to come and join us if you wish. And people were doing <coughs> yeah. 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 They were easy, very yeah. 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 And the police got quite friendly with them. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, yes, and so by, by, by um, dint of, of, of me not telling you what to, to believe, but saying let's have, 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 have an open discussion, we're sort of almost like moving kind of some of the practices of the Occupy movement into uh, into what we're attempting to, to do to do here. Um, I, I, I mean, yes, I mean, I think that the, the Occupy movement was. I mean, there was. It was very, very widespread, and in, in, in from the United States to other bits of 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 of, 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 of Europe, other bits of the world. Um, but um, <clears throat> it was intrinsically um, informal. 
Yeah. And, and those, 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 I, I, nobody ever, or if nobody successfully claimed that, you know, I am a signed up member of, of the Occupy movement. Just, forget about it. Let's get on with the discussion. This is a little signed up member of that. That's what I was saying about the answers, yes. Well, thank you very much. We did that. I know nothing really very much about 17th century, but it's quite interesting to hear about people like the ranchers and the diggers. But I have this kind of general awareness that at different times through history there has been the rise of different social movements, which have often had similarities from what you're saying, people like the ranchers and the diggers, but have been products of their time, which have risen and fallen and, and disappeared again, perhaps like Occupy has largely disappeared now. But there's, there's the one group that you talked about that hasn't disappeared, that was the Quakers. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was wondering, what is it that's different about Quakers that has actually led them to survive as the <coughs> organizing where these other social movements didn't? Uh, well, yes, it's a perfectly fair and reasonable question. Um, You want to say something about Quaker? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm afraid it's a dirty word, organisation. Mm. Um, <laughs> I missed that, sorry. I said, I'm afraid it's a dirty word, organisation. Mm. Yes, um, they've got organised. Um, yes. Um, I mean, uh, the, the kind of period you describe, Richard, in the kind of 1640s up to 1660, um, was an absolute ferment. It wasn't just a civil war. It was a period of revolution. And there was a, there were times when it felt like everything was up for grabs. And in that kind of situation, um, lots of ideas get thrown up, but they, it's a very kind of, vulnerable and fragile situation and um, you know some some groups you know do not survive for all sorts of reasons um, one of the things that happened under the Cromwellian period was a raft of anti-blasphemy laws some of which are still in the statute books actually <laughs> so maybe we should all be careful what we say <laughs> Um, and these could be used very destructively to muzzle what people could talk about and what you could print. Um, one of the leading Quakers, James Naylor, who engaged in some of these provocative actions, um, he uh, went into um, Bristol, riding on a donkey with women scattering palm branches in front of him, um, reenacting Christ's entry into Jerusalem, um, didn't quite get crucified for this, but very closely. Um, he had his tongue pierced for blasphemy, um, he was flogged, and then he was in prison. And when he was released from prison, he died within a, a matter of months. So he was literally broken by that kind of legislation. In that kind of atmosphere, you, you have to start thinking very quickly about survival. <coughs> and the Quakers, I think, basically started organizing in terms of meetings, um, any group of friend, friends could set up a meeting and they gradually began to develop ways of making decisions and I think that again it's worth looking at David Graeber's book because he was very interested in how the Quaker decision making process goes forward which is not on coming to a majority decision you basically keep talking until you can all reach a consensus you can all work with. And you can imagine this can take quite a while. <laughs> we have sat through some meetings where this goes on. Um, 
but it I think it was actually a very powerful and flexible way of holding people together, of working out how to live through times when you're being oppressed while continuing to be what you believe you should be and do. I think that's the code of the Yes, I mean, in, in, in fairness, there, there was and, and is a controversy um, amongst um, well, concerning Quakers, which is that, that it is sometimes said, and Christopher Hill goes quite close, quite far to say this, um, that, um, that Quakers uh, manage to fit into existing society. Um, I, I talked about some um, Philadelphian Quakers who um, became slave owners. For instance, now <clears throat> the, the, the suggestion there is that they were quite good at cutting their cloth to fit into the, the, the what, what was there. But I mean, the, the, the other side in this controversy is to say, well, actually, um, Quakerism uh, remained much more oppositional than. Um, is sometimes said to be the, the case. And I, again, I mentioned um, a, 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 a figure from, from Michelle, um, uh, said <coughs> admires Benjamin Lay, yeah, who um, used provocative actions and what I was calling guerrilla theatre um, to, uh, to criticize uh, the, 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 the um, establishment. The Quaker establishment um, of, 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 of his own day in, in, in Philadelphia and elsewhere. Um, and he became a, a leading uh, uh, abolitionist in the, the, the Quaker um, cause, the, 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 the anti slavery cause. Um, <clears throat> and again, to, at this very moment, I mean, the, 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 there's an organization that very possibly people won't have heard of Trident Plowshare, which is a, a mainly Quaker uh, organization, and as opposed to the, the Trident, Trident nuclear submarines um, in, in, in Scotland today, um, with provocative actions and so on and so and so forth. So that so the the, 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 the tradition of, of of opposition. And not fitting into society it, it, it is a, 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 a lively and continuing um, aspect of, 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 of Quakerism. So I think that the, 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 the charge that Quakers sort of fitted in to all too easily into existing commercial society is probably an unfair charge, or at least there's more than one thing to be said. About about that, but that but, the, but yes, I mean the, the question: how did how did they manage to keep going, whereas um, other uh, groups just just didn't? I, I I don't know. It's partly because well, in, in the case of a, 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 a ranters, they, 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 they're <clears throat> um, a, a ranter would say anything to get out of the problem that that, that they're they're in because they don't the people they're talking to they they don't. Respect, essentially. So, so you want me to, to, to say that that, that uh, um, Christ was was, execute, was 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 crucified at such and such a time? Yeah, right. Okay, you want me to have that? Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but of course, that 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 um, sort of approach it, it means that the individual survival can keep going, but it, it also means that the 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 the, 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 the hard edge view of what uh, was distinctive about about um, ranterism or whatever, but it's difficult, more difficult to maintain. Thank you. Where did ranters get the name from? Mm. How did they call themselves? Ranters. No, it, it, ranters. <laughs> ranters were, a, a, as I understand it, were a, a, a term used mainly by their enemies. Yeah, a bit like what the Daily Mail might call. Um, 
you know, Corbynites or something like that. You know, <clears throat> and and I, I honestly don't know whether the term ranter existed in English um, prior to the ranters. Quite often, what um, was uh, later on when, when, when people referred to ranters, they were alluding to this this batch of disorganized um, anarchists, that kind of kind of thing. But um, whether there might have been people talking about ranters in the 16th century. No, the divine the money. The rent and the raw for the sake of old England. Mm -hmm. uh, that divine from an old banner. Wow. Can you take the use of the word rent yeah. in that banner time, which is certainly yeah. shouting to my brain? Fair enough, yeah, yes, yes. Of course, the term ranter that you mentioned in that, that, that phrase is that ranters in, in, a, in a, a, a kind of um, a, a warm and approving kind of sense. Ah. You know, that, that's, um, yes, I, I'm, I'm you know, good old Edinburgh, yeah. It's Edinburgh, 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 I'm ranter, you know. But, is it going to say, Arthur Wright was ranting about the Nazis and the Jews, yeah. when police seized them in the streets of Mainz. Yeah, yeah. I'm from one of Mainz at all. Yes, I, I just, yeah, yes. And, uh, but I'm <laughs> I just don't really know about that. So thank you for that. For, 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 um, oh, you got that? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Um, I'm sorry. We attempted to draw the line on my forms today from occupied the GA zone. Yeah. Framer in, in very positive terms about their protests and funds. Mm -hmm. uh, describing how they're essentially trying to protest against uh, <coughs> again, unequal disposition of the nation. Because taxes are made on the poor and removed from the rich. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> I, I just, I don't, yeah. Well, yes, anything is possible, I just don't really, I don't really know. I've got a feeling, I mean, the term ranter, I mean, I mean it might be, in fact, um, <coughs> it, it might have been linked more specifically to the, the, the ranchers. Um, inclination to drink alcohol, for instance, but in a pub, you know, there's some guy going on about it, ranting away, you know, um, but, yeah, I just don't know. Surely the word Quakers came from quaking, didn't you? you know, you could say a gerund or whatever the word is, uh, yeah, and make it into a noun. Sorry? As far as I know, Quakers did not brand themselves, if you like. Quaker who was a society. So, society, where is the word Quaker? Quaker was applied to them again by their citizens. And they let it happen. And what? Well, I think one of the, this is what is usually said about this subject matter, so I don't really know. But, um, but yes, I mean, I think Quaker had, Quakers had the, the idea of quaking or trembling before God or something like that. Of that kind. And so they, so they mm. accepted the, 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 the term. So. Didn't it mean that maybe the enemy said they quaked as they prayed? That they, they got to accept their enemies' stated that they were so emotionally around by like mm. one another's interaction that as they prayed, brought it there. It's supposed to be they shook. Yeah, Shaker and Quaker got thrown together. I'd like you to tell me, if, I've never quite got my head wrapped around what bourgeoisie and bourgeois <laughs> kind of what, what's, what's, what's it describing? What's, what are these words? Yeah. Um. Oh, I, there's another 
I, I, I obviously should come, come along and try to be going out there and talk about something like, <laughs> like, like, like that. But in, in, in very, very schematically, and I emphasize schematically, um, the, um, in, in Marx's writings, the, 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 the capitalist class gets referred to very often as the bourgeoisie. So that basically the, the, the bourgeoisie are the people who own the means of, of production. Um, and the workers are, are proletarian, whatever, workers come along and work for, for wages and then get paid by the, 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 the bourgeoisie. Um, and the, the, all the profit goes to the, to the, the bourgeoisie. But it, it, the term also is, is one that just has a, has a kind of much looser and <clears throat> I mean, no, I said that, like, that, 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 an attempt to enrage the bourgeoisie. It's kind of, it's, it's almost enraged the kind of orthodox and well-established aspect of society. I wasn't particularly thinking of it in any particular sort of neat or tidy kind of, kind of way. Yes, I, I know that's maybe why my, my head sort of fumbled around yes. the words, but also yeah. the titles of the screen are you get the emergence of bourgeoisie mm. with organization, the term etymology. <coughs> yes. Or well, well, yes. The, 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 um, yes. yes. The term it, it itself is, is linked to the, the notion of, of a, a burger. Yeah. Which a, a burger is like a, a citizen of some some town, or like 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 Florence or. Whatever it might be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another way in a roundabout connection. Uh, please correct me. The North Eastern Railway, with its wave of fossil minerals like coal, coal from the earth, fossil, and train engine that with greater greed, the greatest knew how to get two pennies together and get five pennies in pocket. Railway. Coal, mines, exports, <coughs> and profitability, <coughs> whereas other uh, internationals are pigheadedly opposed to railways and consequent free movement of people around far and wide. Mm -hmm. The Craig and Green delivery of the northeastern railway, so to go on with them and see uh, engines that work out perfectly. Terms of condition and shareholding. So, fifteen percent of their preference stock for every hundred quid, we got fifteen thousand back. If the coal traffic was buoyant, see, and then they invested that money in good quality. They never they abide. Yes, do you want to go to go about? about further about bourgeoisie or bourgeois? Or? Uh, I, yeah, I'm happy to follow anywhere in the conversation. The problem with the term used is founding against people who live inside the castle walls by people who live outside the castle mm, walls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Possibly where it came from. It's from Bonner, bourgeois. Um, and it's like, you know, the language develops its own association. It's true. It's true that for the etymology is it's yeah. fortress. Yeah. It's fortress. Yeah. 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 This, this discussion can become incredibly complicated in a way that I don't really want it, it, to, like, <coughs> like, who is and who, who is not a member of the bourgeoisie. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if, if you own shares, in, indeed, in, in a, a company, right? You're 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 bourgeois. But what about what about somebody like like me, who, for instance, um, I'm retired. But when I was um, working, uh, I I was a, a, a lecturer in, um, in in a university. So um, th is that bourgeois or not? You know, pension has almost certainly invested in stocks and shares. <laughs> 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 the owners of the yeah. Yes. 
Well, the definition of good would be rich, loving possessions, and being born. So it seems to suggest that if you are branded as bourgeoisie, um, you are a self indulgent um, property lover mm -hmm. who, who is also rather idle. You know, so it's not just an economic term, it refers to uh, a lifestyle, if you like, uh, and an overall attitude. I think that's what we do. Just so right. it's not an economic unit, you know, it's uh, the lifestyle description, uh, which includes a certain level of affluence. The leisured classes. Something like that. <laughs> Were there connections between the Quakers and the Ranters and the Diggers then? And the Levelers? <coughs> uh, <coughs> sort of a scattered cosmos. Yeah, well, yes. I mean, uh, 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 I, I mentioned, I think, that, that, uh, that George Fox met from time to time with with ranters um and he didn't see eye eye to eye with them um so 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 yes i mean it, it, it was a um the the the, the radical um <coughs> movement um there's a a, a a pamphlet um about um james Naylor. The, 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 the Quaker who uses it use the, the, the useful term a, a, a milieu. Yeah, there's a sort of radical milieu of people people who sort of um, were, were certainly rubbed along with each other and, and, and knew many of each of each other. It's a bit like um, I don't know. I mean, think of of, of, of some left wing people today and and and. Uh, 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 Will drink in the same pub, for example, and probably get into a, a discussion about about something that, that um, and, and and that was very much the kind of sort of, sort of situation. The discussion would liable be liable to be on um, some theological topic uh, rather than some um, government document or something or whatever. But um, <coughs> but. Uh, Yes, the the the, 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 the the Quakers and Quakers and, and ranters and seekers and feminists and other well, whole. Yeah. Hmm? Yes, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Yeah. There were, were um, so some of these groups would be more groups than than others. If you see what I mean, some would be looser than than, than others, but. Uh, but but yes, it was a, a, a kind of, and there were some um, lines of thought, theologically, for instance, that were pretty much common to to probably all of them actually. But, um, and I, I mean, I haven't been talking about um, Fox and the Quakers in particular this afternoon, but but Fox, for instance. Um, his theological um, views uh, emerged really in, in the sort of 1640s and, and, and 50s, and his uh, <clears throat> and he went on holding the same theological views um, in well by the, the 1770s when his journal he dictated his journal. So he he he, he was one of the, the one of the things that's admirable about. Fox is that he didn't drift with the times, you know, that that that, 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 that the monarchy had established itself again, and so forth. But he kind of stayed with many of his his earlier his earlier views. Um, and yes, I think if you think of them a milieu or as a group of people who sort of nudged into each other from time to time. That's, that's the right way to to picture it, yes. Oh, thank you. Oh, um, 
Does, it, does anybody have any more questions? Well, how, how about we, we have a break and freshen up our cups and please do eat and let's let's say uh, how about 15 minute break? Okay. 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 Okay.